Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where we go over questionable advice given on places like LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs and we try to turn it into good advice and learn from it. Today I have a very interesting and very very bad piece of advice given on LinkedIn, which is the worst place to get advice, but it's on a topic that so many people get wrong and that is naming and people do get it wrong because naming is extremely extremely hard. But I think there's so much wrong with this specific post that I want to explain my reasoning with naming and how I think when I'm naming things. And maybe we can have a discussion in the comments down below so you tell me what you think about all the choices I'm making and why I think that this advice is wrong. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on dometrain.com. Okay, so let me show you first some code before I show you the advice because I want to make this a bit of like an interactive experience. What I have here is a customer service class and I have a register method. So you have a customer registration coming in and then you have a register method and then you have some validation. It doesn't matter what's happening inside the validation. Uh, and then you have the customer. So we get that through a mapper. We convert a registration to a customer domain object or DTO. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then we have this customers class over here and we say dot save customer and we pass down the customer. And then after we saved, we return it. I believe that this is wrong in so many levels. But what I want to ask you is, what do you think this customer's variable it's supposed to represent? I'm going to pause for a second. You can just stop and pause the video and think about it. Because the way it reads is it reads as a static read-only collection. And we can tell that by the way it's named, this Pascal case. And it says customers, implying that it's a collection of many things, that thing being the customer. At least that's how I'm thinking. And what's weird about that is that why would you say customers dot save customer? Well, maybe that's because this is a DB set and we're using anti framework. But you can tell there's so many assumptions because I don't know what it is. Now I could look at the constructor and know what it is. But given that this is a class member, potentially, I could be anywhere in the class and I shouldn't have to go all the way up to see what it is. Well, spoiler. This is actually a customer repository, which no one should have guessed. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the LinkedIn posts. Now, very, very quickly before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched DomeTrain Pro, a monthly subscription on DomeTrain that gives you access to our entire course catalog. That's 25 courses we have right now. And we also have 17 more coming until August by massive high profile authors that you know and love. If you want to get access to the modular monolith, the clean architecture, domain driven design, and so, so much more coming like vertical architecture, GraphQL, event driven design, Blazor, we have so much coming. This is just a trial and we won't leave the monthly option open forever. We don't know when we're going to close it, but get it before it's gone because currently we're evaluating having a monthly offering. However, if you do get it now, you get to keep it until you cancel it. So don't miss this opportunity. Get the link in the description and I hope to see you on Dome Trainer. Okay, so we have clean code tip. Consider using the collection name rather than repository. No, but anyway, for a clear representation, consider using the dataset's descriptive name such as customers instead of its storage designation, for example, customer repository. I would not classify that as storage designation. I would classify that as more of a data access layer or transport or medium. I wouldn't call it designation. But let's take a look at the code advice. Now, LinkedIn creators have gotten smart. They don't like to have the bad advice and good advice. Now they have good advice, even better advice because the code cop. And in fact, people actually have started tagging me under these posts and some of them get deleted before I get to make a video about them. Keep doing it. If you see something weird, just tag me. I might make a video on it and I might save it early so they don't take it down. But the advice is, this is clear. Yeah, okay, use customer repository if you have a customer repository, but it would be better if that customer repository has the name customers. No, it's misleading. It looks like this is a collection, not a repository. I have more issues with this whole method, by the way. I'm going to go in that in a second, but let's take a look at the text accompanied with this post just to get more context. So naming conventions. Some prefer customer repository. I would say most prefer customer repository. Also, side note, the way this is sort of named here implies that this is a property, not a private read-only field, which is what it should be. We're going to touch on that in a second, but I want to mention that as well. So some prefer a customer repository. Others opt for the simpler customers. I want to point out, I have never 
in my life seen someone use customers to represent a customer repository. Every single person I've seen uses customer repository. The only difference in that is when there's only one repository injected, let's say you have a customer service and you only inject the customer repository, the only naming difference I've seen is people call that repository as just repository because they think it's implied in that service because it's a customer service, you could only have the customer repository. I disagree with that because you can split your repositories to different responsibilities. So if you have a product, you might have a product catalog, you might have a basket, you might have pricing repository, you might have so many repositories. So I like to be explicit with my naming and I'm going to show you what my approach would be here. But then they say, but isn't our goal to represent a storage collection of, well, customers? No, you store a repository that can act on that collection, but you don't represent the collection. It's like you say library. When you inject library, a thing with books, you don't say books in the method. It would be as if I had a class library and I named library books. No, the library is the library containing or knowing how to manage books. And then some code, for example, customer is customers dot get email address. I disagree. It makes sense for a collection, but it doesn't make sense for a repository. For example, here, you wouldn't have customers dot get email address. You'd have customers dot or customer repository, actually, dot get by ID, get by email, and get could be a predicate as well, where you can just pass down some parameters and have a Lambda function passed in. No, it is not crystal clear. Customers.save is crystal clear, assuming customers is something like a DB set, not the repository. This just doesn't make any sense to me. Please leave a comment down below and let me know. What do you think about this? Do you think that this makes sense? And let's go back into the code again, because I want to touch on something else. Okay, validate. Fine, I don't want to argue about this. This, in my opinion, shouldn't just be reg. This should be customer registration. Now, I wouldn't call this class over here customer registration. I would call it customer registration request or whatever. I, I don't like how this is named because it could be many, many things. But this is just a request to create a customer, really. In the same way, by the way, that I don't like that the register function returns a customer that isn't nullable or is just a customer, while registration could have like a database exception, what happens here? Or it could be like an issue with the email already being used. What do you return? This method has many, many problems. I'm going to focus on the naming. And when it comes to the customer itself, yeah, that is, you know, a good name that is named well. And that method here is named well, in my opinion. Now here, I wouldn't name customers customer. In fact, I wouldn't have it as a public uh, property as well. I would have a private read only customer repository, and I would just call the customer repository, inject it from the constructor, and then go ahead and use it. Even if this is a million miles away, I know immediately just by looking at this, that this is a customer repository and it is saving a customer. And I know by this naming that this is a private field, most likely read only. Way better naming, way more explicit. But I still don't like that this method is called save customer because this is more of a create customer. We clearly are adding that customer into the system. Save can imply both creation and modification. And I don't like using the save terminology in my repository. So this would be create customer. But then again, this is a customer repository. So the context matters. So if you want to create something in that repository and the parameter is the customer, then clearly this will just be create. So now this reads way, way better because you know exactly what you're using here and you know exactly what this method is doing. Now, if you want to go a step further and you want to use sort of the common approach of calling these methods, you can have the create async method. Now you might not like using the async suffix. That's totally okay. That's completely up to you. And please leave a comment down below letting me know, are you using the async suffix? Are you not using it? I really like to know. Last time I asked, more people said, yes, I am using it than no. But in some cases, you know, nowadays everything is sort of async, so it could feel a bit redundant. And now just by this small change, this method, in my opinion, reads way, way better. Now I should have changed so many things here, but that's where I'm going to leave it. Please, please, please be explicit with your naming, but also assume the context of the thing you're using. For me, that aspect, the name of the method is as important as the name of the parameter or the variable here. 
please leave a comment down below letting me know how would you do this differently and what do you think about this piece of advice do you think it's good or it was good in the beginning do you think now it is better how else would you change it leave a comment and let me know well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding